This is Content Objective 3 for Section 2.5 Continuity, and in this I would like you to be able to apply the Intermediate Value Theorem to draw conclusions about function values. And when we're done, I would like you to be able to restate that Intermediate Value Theorem in your own words, and then illustrate your interpretation by drawing a labeled picture. So let's look at this theorem. This theorem says the Intermediate Value Theorem, or the IVT, tells us that if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and n is any number between the y-coordinate associated with a and the y-coordinate associated with b, where those two y-coordinates are not the same, which is kind of obvious, because if they were the same, there's nothing in between them. So as long as those y-coordinates are different, I can choose a value n that's in between those two y-coordinates. Once I've chosen that n, then there must be a number c in the open interval from a to b, such that the output associated with c, or the y-coordinate that goes with c, is equal to that number you chose. Now, this is the first of five theorems that you will need to have memorized by the time we are completed with the course. When we're done, you got to know all five of them. So, some of these theorems have certain things in common when it comes to the hypothesis, and some of them have certain things in common when it comes to the conclusion. So, the things that I find to be mandatory here, and that will connect to the other theorems we will learn, are the facts that in this theorem, f has to be continuous on the closed interval. So we would have, as long as f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, where f of a is not the same as f of b, then we're going to get a conclusion that deals with the function's outputs. Now, I didn't say exactly what happens with the output, because that's up here. But we need to know that the Intermediate Value Theorem starts with continuity, and it gives us a conclusion involving y-coordinates, or outputs. So, to see that in play, let's look at Example 1. Example 1 says, prove there is a root of the equation 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0, somewhere between 1 and 2. So, buried in this problem, problem is an application of this Intermediate Value Theorem. So, in order to use the Intermediate Value Theorem, I need f to be continuous on a closed interval. So, we're going to be looking for a closed interval from 1 to 2, and we want f, which is this expression, to be continuous. So, we can write f of x, which is 4x cubed minus 6x squared, plus 3x minus 2 is continuous on the closed interval from 1 to 2. We know that because this is a polynomial, and polynomials never have division by 0, they have no even roots, and they have no logs. So all of the places where we would cause problems with the domain are gone. This domain is all reals. We never have to pick up our pencil. So here we've got a function that is continuous on a closed interval, and we got to check those endpoints and make sure that they equal different things. So if I plug 1 into this function, I'll get a 4 minus a 6 is a negative 2, plus a 3 is a 1, minus 2 is a negative 1. And if I plug 2 in, I get an 8 times 4 is a 32, minus a 6 times 4 is a 24, so I get an 8, plus a 6 is a 14, minus 2 gives me a 12. So here I have two outputs that are different. They do not equal each other. So I've satisfied all the conditions of this theorem. Then we're going to get the conclusion, which says there exists a number c. So there is a c in the open interval from 1 to 2, such that f of c equals the value that we want. So the value that we want is we want the output of this function to equal 0, and 0 is between negative 1 and 12. So we can write such that f of c equals 0 by the IVT.
We chose an output between the two outputs we knew, and because we had to get from negative 1 up to 12 without picking up our pencil, we had to pass through 0 on our way. Now I'd like you to try your notes web exam problems number 8 and 9 and if you can't do them highlight the parts that are confusing and then I'd like to, you to restate that intermediate value theorem in your own words and then illustrate your interpretation by drawing a labeled picture. This is what I'm going to have you guys drawing on the board tomorrow is that labeled picture that illustrates the intermediate value theorem.